good day. Today we're going to be focusing on how to create the drawing sheets of a basic assembly project. So we're going to show you how to do an exploded assembly, an assembled assembly, how to put the uh, parts list and the uh, balloons in place, and then do detailed drawings. So to get started, as you can see, we've got our assembly uh, that we've joined together with our joints. These are components, okay, which is what is required for an assembly, so they can't be bodies, they have to be components. And so our first step is that we're going to create a uh, animation, which is the tool that is used to, to create the exploded assembly, and from there we'll then create the drawing packages. So the first step is we're going to switch from design to animation. And in the animation, we'll get our components, and we're going to be able to animate our components here. Now, there is the ability to do an automatic explosion, which is an option under the transform. So you can auto explode all levels. You can auto or manually explode um, individual components. And you can just transform components, which allows you to control exactly how the components move in all directions and locations. So that's what we're going to do is we are going to do a transform process on our components. So our first step is that we're going to pick a component, transform it, pick a second component, transform it, and then we'll create our imagery that we need for our exploded view. All right, so transforming the component, I've got one component already selected, and you can select it. The easiest way is selecting it from the browser over on the left-hand side. I can now select the, the direction uh, arrow. I can also rotate it around a specific uh, point or location also. So I'm going to select uh, this arrow, and I'm going to slide the block out. And so we'll transform that movement to sliding the block out. So I can now type in exactly how far I would like to slide it. This one happens to be a negative Z of 0 0.350, which actually is a pretty good distance. And we'll choose OK. So you can see that now in our storyboard here at the bottom, the blue part has got a movement. The second part is the red component, and so we're going to transform the red component. I can highlight it and right mouse click, and I can repeat transform component. I can choose transform this component. So I don't have to go back up to the actual pull down. I can highlight the particular part that I would like to transform and then select it directly from the right click menu. So now, oh, take it back. It still thought I was selecting the uh, blue bar the blue box so we'll select this component then right mouse click and choose transform component I can drag this component in this direction out at 1.9 choose OK and the thing is is that I have to do multiple transform components in two separate moves I can't do it as one move if I do it in one move where I move in the X direction and then the Y direction, that component literally will move diagonally. And so each orientation um, of movement has to be done independently. So we do have a video, and so this is actually going to move diagonally because I didn't uh, accomplish the task so as you can see it kind of explodes out and it's just a you know it's just 10 seconds of movement here so there we have it so the, we have our exploded views and so at this point puzzle cube is going to be saved under the animation tool so I'm going to hit file and save And we'll say animation. And we'll choose OK. 
So the next step will be taking this exploded view and then bringing that into a drawing sheet. And so the easiest way to do that is we'll create a new drawing. So we'll hit the drop down menu and we'll find drawing and we've got two choices. We can create a drawing sheet from a design or from an animation. Well, let's do it from our animation because we're currently working on it. So we'll choose it from animation. And so now it's asking me, we're going to do storyboard number two. Okay, or we can use storyboard number one, which I had created earlier. So storyboard number two is what we're going to use. And it's a B size sheet, Bravo size. And it's American Society of Mechanical Engineers is the basic standard. And we're going to be creating a brand new drawing. So we'll choose OK. So it's literally creating the B-size sheet with the title block. Uh, and now it wants me to place the object. Now what's nice about this is that I can place the object, but I can also change orientation. So if I wanted a different isometric view of, of the part, I can change the direction of the isometric view to get a better look of the parts. So I could just say standard, but I think the northeast isometric is probably our best looking view. So we'll select that and we'll make this shaded as our view. And our scale is one to one. So we can also change the scale itself if we'd like to. Until you hit the OK, you can keep making the modifications that you need. And when you choose OK, it gets created. Uh, at this point, I can now create the assembled assembly over here on the right hand side. And to do that, uh, we're going to go ahead and create another view, another base view. But this time, it's of the model and it's not of the storyboard. So that model is going to have, we'll say a northeast isometric, same direction. And so it's got a 1 to 2 scale. Let's see, we can probably change that to 1 to 1. And we can also shade that. And so that becomes a shaded model now. And we can choose OK. So now we've got our two views. But what about... the parts list and the balloons. Well, under tables, we have the ability to create our table, our parts list table. And when we do that, it's also going to create our balloons for us. So we'll choose table. And we have to select the view that we're going to work from. So it's going to be from this view. And there's our parts list. And actually, it fits pretty well down here next to the title block. And it will automatically create the balloons. Now, what happens if the balloons are not in the right location? We can click on a balloon. and We've got the two data points. We can change the arrow pointing location. We can also change the balloon uh, location just by grabbing the data point and making a modification of that data point. Again, the arrow must reside on the object. And when you click off, it will then update your balloon for you. And so you can actually still customize your balloon placements. Now you could do this uh, with the letter B and then place the balloons first and then uh, build the table afterwards. But putting the table in first and then editing the balloons, perfectly okay. So now that we got sheet number one completed, let's go ahead and create a new sheet. And down here across the bottom, we have the ability to hit the plus sign to create a new drawing sheet. It's going to create our second drawing sheet. We're going to create our base view. And our base view, again, is going to be of our model. But we're going to select the model, choose OK. This one's going to be visible edges. We're going to do visible and hiddens, and we'll choose OK. 
Now what we're going to do is we're going to turn off puzzle parts. We're going to suppress specific puzzle parts. And so puzzle part one, puzzle part two, puzzle part three. And so depending upon the view that you select, and again, if we're going to turn off puzzle part number one, then this actually looks better for like the top view than it does the front view. So we can grab and move this. And then we can do drawing projections and we can project the front view. And then we can do drawing projection from here to do the right side view and to do the isometric view. So again, you can build it as you need it. Now this particular view, the isometric, we can right mouse click and edit. Select the view, edit, we can shade it. It's still one to one. Uh, we're not gonna show any interference edges and so forth. The scale is from the parent, we'll choose close. So now we get a shaded view. We have our three views here. The nice thing is, is that it makes it easy for us to then dimension. So we can pick dimensioning, just like our drawing environment. We can select the entity, bring our dimension in. Bring our dimension in. So we're able to do all this with our dimensioning process uh, overall. And we can choose OK. Now, editing our dimension, we could change our data points. So our data point changes slightly. And we could do, that probably would not work out as well as I would hoped. So let's cancel that because that will, that particular feature looks like it's going to edit and do it as an aligned dimension as opposed to a standard dimension. And if that happens, then what we'll have to do is delete this. and choose OK. And if we put our dimension in, we should have selected the bottom corner to the corner and then pulled that dimension to give us. And what was I working on? I wanted to make sure that there was a gap here at the bottom. So since I had selected this line, I wasn't getting a gap here for the extension line. And I wanted to make sure that that corner had the gap. So I delete the dimension. Initially, I thought maybe I could move the uh, grip point, but uh, I did, could not. All right, so there we have a view. And to do another sheet, we just do a quick add again. Same thing, bring our object in. This time, sheet number three, It'll be visible in hidden edges, one to one, and choose OK. This time we'll turn off puzzle piece number one, and there's puzzle piece number two, or puzzle one, red one. And so this actually is a pretty decent front view. We can then project from this view to the right side into the top view and to the isometric view. Choose OK, edit the isometric view, shade it, close it, add our dimensions to our drawing environment. Again, you can pick the corners to create your dimensions. And notice I'm dimensioning between the objects. 
as much as possible. And what that does is that provides us a reference point. provides us a reference point of what that object shape is. And so we have that dimension already, that dimension I do not have, this dimension. So that dimension's there, 1.5. Uh, we need this dimension from here to here is 0.75. So that way I have that, have the height, <coughs> have the length. So we're set. Am I missing any dimensions here? I don't think I am. 75. Uh, 75. Don't have this dimension here that I need. And I could have put this one here or here either way. Shouldn't need that one because I have this one here, and that minus that is that. So it's almost overdimensioned on that. But notice, no dimensions to hidden lines. That's part of the key. We do not dimension hidden lines. And so that's the process. To do the third drawing, we do the same thing. Um, we basically do another quick add. Now when you're done, you need to output it as a PDF file. So we choose Output to PDF. We want to output all the sheets. I always like opening the PDF file after we do that and I include the line weight. So it's really simple to export it as a PDF to send to your instructor or to your client. Have a great day. We look forward to hearing from you soon. Bye now.